moment we feared. It was just announced that the first two episodes are going to be going to movie theaters. Uh, I was curious what your reaction was when you heard. Oh, did you guys not? Did you guys not know this? Uh, yeah. Know. So hi, very cool. That's There's your reaction. Else you can tell us. <laughs> they announced <laughs> that know. the first two episodes are going to be played uh, in movie theaters as part of a special fan event. Oh, oh very cool. right, very I, I heard about the fan event. Okay, that makes sense. that's incredible and rightfully so. I don't, I want people to have that experience like we did of seeing it on a big screen, there's an, it's it's very cinematic, so that's that's amazing. You're the first person I heard that from. Great news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, literally, that's, that's the brand new news right from you, right there. You knew? I saw that on Twitter. I yeah. don't know. You're on Instagram? No. Well, I am, yeah. but I don't look at it. <laughs> yeah, I found that out on Instagram. So Bravo. Same. Same. That is very, very good news. I know Corey Olsen, the talking professor, was pushing for that, so obviously, Someone did well. It's really cool. I think it's. I think yeah. the sh the the show is so cinematic. Um, and the first two episodes, J. A. Bayona, who directed it, um, is such an amazing director who works with the camera so beautifully. So I yeah. think they'll really shine in in cinemas. He is a film director. Is not tour. You know, there's uh, there's very few. I feel like there, there's there's very few of those directors still working at this scale. Um, there's a, a handful of those that believe in the process from its inception that get involved to, you know, the end of it, like see it through, want to run how, as, as long as the cameras need to roll in order to find that nugget and that kernel, that essence. Um, and it was, that's what the process was like for, for me to work with him. And I had a particular closeness to him as we both speak Spanish. So you're, I was able to to meet that even more intimate J.A. And because um, I call him J.A. because we're friends. Um, uh, he, he did a thing that was very, uh, that, that I found uh, being, being more of a visual person and the character being quite behavioral. Uh, he would run takes uh, without any dialogue sometimes and we would just run through the beats uh with looks he would play music to get you in that environment of, of the character so it just felt like working with just a great film director his imagination is just wild and so is his ambition um and yet also he's very kind of silly and light-hearted on set yeah and that's a wonderful combination for an actor to be able to work with someone like that yeah um and i think also like this is a global cast um which I think really suited the material because Tolkien was obsessed with myth and legend and we had kind of all these different cultures um, who kind of were bringing their particular imagination from their particular place and J.A.'s mm. is just... and also his links with horror. I think that fantasy and horror kind of go really well together. The beautiful thing about Tolkien is that a new generation can continuously find this material. And so I'm curious how you would pitch this show to someone who, you know, maybe saw the the, the Peter Jackson movies once and, and, and have never read the books. This is where you want to start. The films are Middle Earth and it's adulthood and they stand on their own. But this is, this is the first chapter. This is the first steps on these epic journeys that you get to witness. You don't need to know anything, just turn on Amazon, you'll be happy. And what you'll see is such a rich, rich set of worlds and realms because each 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 realm is at the peak of its power. Numenor, Kazakh Dun, the Elven Kingdoms. It's it's a brilliant time to come to Middle Earth and discover what happened before all those major events that we know quite well. The beauty about Tolkien's work is that there's so many themes which are timeless and still modern. Um, the themes of friendship, of hope, of um, love and despair, and um, I guess sticking together, uh, believing that something better is, is coming. Uh, and I think that's the, the beauty of this world because it's so vast and so fantastic. Yet within it, it has these stories which hopefully audiences will really be able to connect to. I think it's a really good combination. I think it's interesting because Tolkien was not a big fan of allegory, but I think um, one thing that appeals to me about fantasy is that it uh, cushions you in a world where you can comfortably explore your 
our existential longing, what it is to be human. Um, and, and those themes of love, of loyalty, all these things are timeless. They belong to all of us, they're universal. Um, and that belongs to this moment as much as it did 20 years ago. I would say that the themes are are mythological. They are, they, they, you know, where he started it was local, but it's translated to the universal. So, so any of the themes that we feel as humans, you know, the battle between head and heart, the relationship to power, what happens to ego? I mean, and specifically in terms of Numenor, there's people who want who want to live forever, and there's another another side of the island which is more of the faithful, who um, who would like to continue on with the gift of Iluvatar and die and be mortal. So there's the, yeah there are there are, there are, there are many many a theme, and I think I think because Tolkien was a genius and that he condensed lots of different mythologies that this will be relatable as a story throughout the centuries probably for him. It's, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be ongoing. Going into this, we were told that there's a five season commitment uh, to this, which is great. It's job security for you guys and uh, you can sort of plan out what you're going to be doing. Um, I'm curious how much you asked um, about the the future of the arc or, or where the story is going. Did you want to know any of that or you're just focused on the now? Um, I mean, of course, I mean, everyone kind of wants to know like what their security is like, I guess. But I think um, right now, I think the person that Theo is in the first season will be very different to what Theo is when he's mid 20s, you know. Um, he's also the human, some people are elves and they get to live a lot longer. So I honestly have no clue what's going on. But um, right now I've been I've been set a task to do and I think it, I don't really want to get ahead of myself too much and just kind of focus on, on doing the job for now. And um, if I if I live through Theo as he's living um, it, then I think that's where the, the, the best of it will come out. You won't be in your mid twenties, five <laughs> seasons from now, you'll be, you'll be 90. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we know who we're playing in terms of Elendil, Earian, Kemen, but like some some of the characters are uh, canon. So we know where, where the trajectory is and Tolkien's written kind of signposts um, moments that, that we know for these characters but at the minute we're focusing on, on season one and you know exploring the characters in their early beginnings uh Sealdor, for example isn't a warrior yet he's um a sailor on the cusp of adulthood who's trying to find himself and his place in Numenor it's quite exciting to kind of not know everything um and I think also kind of the showrunners have as they've got to know us all as well had that um, influence how they've written yeah. particular characters and stuff. So it's really, it's exciting. I'm curious if you guys were able to keep up with uh, some of the storylines that were happening in other kingdoms and other realms, or were you guys focused primarily on what you were doing? I think it's, um, you've got to focus on the world that you're in, I think. Um, yeah, I guess that there's, there's no need really for a sense of the macro. You can just keep it to your world. And I think that benefits your character, depending on your storyline, of course. And with myself, I think it was all things Numenor. I mean, we were primarily focused within our worlds, but we had the, the gift of going to other people's sets and seeing their worlds. And that was really special. Uh, I once saw a dwarf a wine Arthur eating sushi at lunch, and that is that is a that is a, a very bold thing to see. He had to kind of like take his his beard and like lift it up and then just swallow some sushi. But like yeah, seeing all the worlds it was very special. But we only fully saw the finished product a few weeks ago, and that was an emotional experience because we've all been so engrossed in our own worlds, and then seeing everyone else bring their A game and. Yeah, that was it. Was great. It was great. Whose review uh, of Rings of Power means the most to you? For better or worse, my mum. <laughs> <laughs> my mum. She introduced me to the book. She's been a huge Tolkien fan as long as I can remember. And you know, I grew up in Wellington, so Tolkien has been inescapable my whole life. When I was in primary school, Peter Jackson was making his first trilogy. When I was at drama school in Wellington, he was making the Hobbit movies. You know, Middle Earth has been in the air my whole life. I never thought I'd be part of one of these stories, but now that I am, the person who has the strongest opinion is in fact my mother. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> That's also my answer. Yeah. Your mom. Same. My mom. <laughs> uh, my mother is one of the least overtly excitable people about my career. <laughs> Not in a bad way, she's proud, yeah. but but she, you know, I, I am her boy. You know, so there is the, all this this mirage of the fame or 
big posters and stuff like that that really doesn't do much for her so so um, have, having have, I, I want to bring essence to the character and, and and if my mother sees that i know that then i did it right because she knows my essence so like i i'm very excited to to hear what she has to say I found that I was uh, terrified for the characters at every turn. It felt like there was a threat around every corner. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally don't think I'd make it about five minutes in the world of Middle Earth. How long do you think you would survive? Mm, I can't see very well, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, you could get some glasses, surely, Middle Earth Does glasses. anyone have glasses? Do we, have we don't them? need them in Numenor. We've got perfect yeah, if I lived on, If I lived on Numenor, I could last a long time, I think, if I was in Middle Earth. Mm. She's got a lot of smarts though, this one, so she'd work her way around it. No, you could go to like a wizard and like get some, some Get some healing. eyes. Yeah, get some, some new, eyes. new eyes. Like could Ema go to a wizard and get some new eyes? <laughs> <laughs> An actor in Middle Earth <laughs> with all these <laughs> orcs. No <kids. laughs> Do you think I could say a sonnet like and they'd leave me alone or something? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, I, I, I enjoy fishing. I can climb a tree, but probably not very long to be quite honest with all these warriors and everything and you know I'm uh, I'm 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 used to my comfortable life in the 21st century so <laughs>